because if you're not balanced, it doesn't matter how good you are growing, mm. you will turn over. Okay? And you know what? Uh, I like to read the New Living Translation of the Bible because it uses the word common sense. Mm -hmm. Okay? And if you don't have, if you are not balanced, you turn over. Mm. Okay? You know, that <coughs> it doesn't say that you should throw out your mind, it's so sure that your mind should be renewed. Mm -hmm. Okay? But sometimes when we think the more stupid I look, the more holy I am, the more I am with the Holy Spirit. But but that's not the case. Jesus was not like that. And um, it, <clears throat> I actually talked with a few people around it lately about this thing about the, the you know, because I asked some people, you know, does the gifts of the Spirit, because that was how I was taught, do they come from the outside or do they come from the inside? Mm -hmm. you, know, I, you know, now you have to understand that <clears throat> When we get born again, you receive the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. where, where do you receive Him? In your spirit. That means He is inside. Mm -hmm. And um, while there was, I was just reminded of a scripture that uh, was um, that, that comes out very well in the Amplified Bible, where it's uh, John 3 34, where it says, For since He whom God has sent speaks the words of God, proclaims God's own message, when this is not this is about most people. God does not give him his spirit sparingly or by measure, but boundless is the gift God makes of his spirit. And as David said, you know, that sometimes, you know, that often we limit ourselves to think, you know, I got that one gift. You know what? <clears throat> and we think often that it is God who sovereignly decides what gift I'm going to have. But I think well, and, I, and I'm more and more convinced of it is that you, when you receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, and the Holy Spirit start uh, living on the inside of you, now you have the potential for all the gifts. Mm -hmm. What decides what gifts I'm going to have is dependent <coughs> on what areas I'm cultivating. You know, it's like when I get born again, it's, let's say my spirit is like a field, okay? It, you know, it's what I decide to sow in that field dictates what comes out of that field. But that field is not dictated to that I can only sow that kind of seed. Okay, so let's say I get born again and I have a great interest, uh, maybe because of situations I've been in or circumstances I've been exposed to, that I got a great interest of healing. So that is the area that fascinates me. So I read about it, I hear about it, I talk about it, I pray about it, I find people who are sick praying regarding it, and all these things cultivates within me, in my spirit, that makes that gift grow forth. For where you have another person who might be more exposed to another side of it, and he or she exposed that side of it. And they, they grow that kind. Mm. But I believe, that really, that, and because very often, that, you know, there is no limitation with God. Mm. You know, but, you know, there's one thing that is very important, is that if you want to know how to be led by the Holy Spirit, don't go first and foremost to the New Testament. Mm. Go to the Gospels. The four Gospels. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, in how to be led, if you, if you, if you follow the Apostle Paul, if you follow uh, Apostle Peter and all these guys, you know, don't follow them in how they got led by the Holy Spirit because they are humans like us. They are not the prototype. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the prototype. Mm -hmm. He was the perfect man mm -hmm. with the perfect measure of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's him we look upon how do we get led by the Holy Spirit. Do you understand that? Because Peter, Paul, and all the other guys, they are just as weak as you and I are. Mm -hmm. you know, and you and I, we've done things, but we wouldn't want other people to think that was led by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, he's the perfect prototype. He is showed that how I am led by the Holy Spirit. Do you know, 
He didn't say to someone. Uh, he didn't say to a woman when the when the Roman soldier came. You know, my servant is sick. I'm sorry. I don't have that gift. But I can give you a word. I can comfort you. I can give you a hug. But I don't have the gift of healing. No, he had all the gifts operational in him. And the Bible says, as he is, so shall he be. No, it didn't say, as Paul is, as he is. No, as Jesus. Jesus is a prototype of how you and I should be led by the Holy Spirit. There was no limitations. Mm -hmm. Remember, you know, whatever circumstance, whatever situation he was in, he had the answer. Okay? You know, and, and, and the Gospel of John says here, you know, that God does not give him his spirit sparingly or by measure, but boundless is the gift God makes of his spirit. Amen? But because we have been taught, when we taught warm, we believe warm, when we believe warm, we expect in warm, and when we expect warm, we get a warm thing. Most likely nothing. Okay? And and I, I, I really believe it's so important we, we you know that you know whatever you know you help God decide what He's going to give you. Let's say uh, when I was a student, I mean, my teacher comes in and says to me, you know, one of you guys, you're going to be chosen to be sent to Honolulu for two years free course. Okay? Where all the teachers at the university will sit down, have a long meeting, and decide who it's going to be. I can help all these guys in their decision. I can, by my work ethic, my behavior, my attitude, everything, my approach to school, I help them in their decision making to choose me. Mm. Do you understand that? Mm. And, and, and you know that, that if, if I, you know, we think sometimes that God choose sovereignly. No, he chose because we actually help him choosing us. Yeah. No, but it's, it was not a coincidence that David got chosen. It's not a coincidence that, that all these guys got chosen because they helped God choose through the life that they lived. Okay? David was not, he was a shepherd for the sheep by him taking care of the sheep, by him taking it very important, see, look at a very important task. He helped God to look at him and say, I'm going to choose him as the king of Israel. But then we often think that God just looked around. <laughs> okay, now that's not how it works. We help him. If you, you know, we, you know, I used to think it was like, oh, I, I really want. Oh, I wish I had that gift. Mm. I wish I had that gift. <laughs> and when I, when I, when, when, when I uh, please God, give me that gift. And when I didn't do anything else, please God, give me that gift. And it would, oh, it would be nice to have that gift, God. It would be nice. Please. Please. Please, God. Please, God. I will give 10 pounds in my offering. I will sow the seed. Oh, no. Do you know, do you know it, it, the, but what I should have realized was that I can cultivate that part through where I invest my time. You know, you can see, you know, human beings, we are more or less born the same way. Okay? But I don't know, if you take a man from one kind of sport, put him into another kind of sport, he's more or less hopeless. Okay? You know, I, I've been told Tiami is a fierce table tennis player. <laughs> but uh, they, they're going to line up, chance. <laughs> but but if you take her and put her in a badminton place, it might be a completely different story. Okay. But that's not necessarily because. But that's not because that she was better at table tennis than badminton. Why was she better at one sport than the other? Because that's where she practiced. 
That's where she trained. Mm -hmm. And because she invested time in that area, she became good at that area. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I believe it's the same thing with the gifts of the Spirit. Because I cannot see, understand, I cannot get it when, when you put it according to the character of God. <clears throat> I cannot see that God would only want to give you one gift. But very often what happens is that when we get one gift, we stay satisfied. Okay? God wants to give you endless <laughs> of blessings. Next year, Oliver and Tatsman have another chair. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that was not a prophecy, don't worry. That was just me trying to be funny, okay? Tatsman didn't think it was funny. <laughs> okay, but, but it is, it is, because like, let's say that, you know, that, when I'm in a situation, and I and, and I and and you know and I operate in that kind of one gift or whatever you know. Let's say uh, uh, I could prophesy and uh, and uh, when someone came who really needed a healing, it would be you know and, and 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 you know what kind of representative would I be of God? Because you have to understand when people see us, they see God. The way they see you, that's the way they understand God. So if someone comes to me and say, could you pray for me because I'm ill? And I turn around and say, because I'm a good charismatic, I've been brought up well, you know, God gives gifts. I say, you know, oh, I would love to. I, have, I don't have the gift. That person now will look upon God as a God of limitations. Okay? Do you know that we are called ambassadors of Christ? Do you, do you know, an embassy in a foreign country represents everything that that country is. Everything. Not a small part of it, everything. You and I, we represent everything by what the kingdom of God is. Yeah. <clears throat> but what had limited it is our understanding that, like, <clears throat> because many of us have, because this has been our experience, because this is, and our experience has been, had come because of, we have believed. Okay? So therefore, don't trust your experiences. Because if you believe wrong, yeah, it was close too. But very often what happens is that if the devil can't distract you, he will limit you. Okay? If he can't stop you from being born again, he will tell you speaking in tongues is of the devil. Okay? If he can't stop you from being baptized in the Holy Spirit, he will tell you you can only have one gift. You better choose wisely. Okay? And, and, and that's the way the devil works all the time. But God is without measure. Absolutely without measure. When he gives, there is no limitation. He does not have a budget. Christmas shopping. Each person, that amount of pounds. Each child makes a amount of pounds. No, they're all running around in the in the in the shops. You can see them with the list, you know. But God does not have a budget. Each believer half a gift, and then they have, when we come together, they have one. No, <laughs> there is there, there is no measure. And I, I'm telling you, and I, I think that's where one, one of the places where I went wrong, uh, where me, my understanding went wrong, because when I look to be led at by the Holy Spirit, I always look to the New Testament, you know, the book of Acts and onwards. But you have to understand that these are men and women like you and me. Yes, many of these uh, things 
are of you know well of God, no doubt about that. But you have to understand it's a limited, it's not a prototype of how it should be. Jesus is a prototype. He was a you know he operated under the Holy Spirit by the guidance of all he did operate as God. But you know, we know Peter, you know, yeah, he got a lot of things right, but he was a human being. So I can't use him as a prototype. I can be inspired by what how God used him, but I but it would be dangerous of me to say, put him as a prototype and say, this is how the Holy Spirit leads. Because as anointed and as blessed and as powerful Peter was, he was still limited. Okay? And 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 we so so Jesus, he's the one. And I think that's where I went wrong because I've seen that, you know, I always went to a New Testament and say, you know, this is how, this is how, this is how. But, you know, what I really should do is, I should look at Jesus and say, see how he was born. Okay? And I'm telling you, the sign of a spiritual man, as I shared a little bit on Friday, do you know what it is? A sign of a spiritual man? I'm a bit in. You don't know, you slip. The <laughs> <laughs> sign of a spiritual man is peace. Peace. Okay? Not laziness, peace. Okay? And, uh, think, think about it, you know, everywhere in, in England now there's these firing rounds, everyone is worried about someone's going to pick you on your soul and say, you're yeah, out. <laughs> okay? But let's say you had a close relationship with a man or woman who's in charge of who's going to be fired. So it's just been announced that work, we're going to fire 75% of all of you. Everyone get worried. Ooh. We all see ourselves living in TVs. And <laughs> <laughs> whatever, you know, how we're going to pay this and how we're going to do this and whatever. Turns out, but by coincidence, you had a, you know, no, no, you had, you had a good relationship with one you said, and you go out uh, you meet socially the following Friday, and you know you just talk and so whatever. All week, it's been everyone has been worried at work. Is it me? Is it you? Me? <laughs> you? The work rate at the workplace had increased two hundred percent. No. I don't know if you passed the road works down the road here. I never seen so many road people <laughs> at one place, and I said to Matthew, "Look at them. Most of them have their hands in their pocket, <laughs> looking at two guys working." <laughs> I said, "I can do that." <laughs> no, but anyway, so so you've been in that whole week. When on Friday you go out socially with with the man or woman who's in charge of these things because you've got to know them or whatever reason. And then in the conversation that person says to you, oh, by the way, don't worry because you're not going to be laid off. What happens to you? Peace. <laughs> Confidence. Credit card comes out again. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... <laughs> Did I hit a call? <laughs> no, but think about when you go back on Monday to work, Everyone else is still in the same worry and concern, but you can walk in with peace. Why? Because you know the person who is in charge, and the person who is in charge has told you, you are going to be fired. Okay? You have to understand. God, we say, is the judge of all things. If you walk with him, he will tell you things that will breed confidence into you. Peter, remember when he, at the Garden of Gethsemane, they came to take Peter, no sorry, Jesus, he panicked. No, Peter, every time there was a Circumstance, a situation, he panicked. Mm -hmm. He just wake up in the storm. He took the sword, cut off the ear. <laughs> <laughs> no, he panicked all the time. 
Every time there was a circumstance, a situation that was, do you know what, we do the same thing, but we don't cut the ear off someone. <laughs> we shout the ear off God. Mm. Have you ever heard your own prayers? I'm a man of faith. God, help me! Help me! Help me! It's not, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not heard your prayers, but I heard mine. <laughs> and when I look at it from the outside on myself praying, it doesn't sound like I have a relationship. Okay? Oh, it's only me, okay, I know that. <laughs> but, but notice Peter, he panicked in these situations. He cursed Jesus, and all these things happened. Then Jesus dies, he got resurrected, Jesus gives them the Holy Spirit, the, hope, the day of Pentecost come, and he's a transformed man. Amen. When he was arrested, put in prison, and was told the next morning we're going to cut your head off, he slept. I've been worrying about that actually. Does that mean that we're not going to rest in heaven? Think about it. You know this is your last night. Tomorrow you're going to be killed. What are you going to do? I know for me, I'm not going to sleep. But what happens is that peace came upon him. He was before Peter, he was Peter in the flesh, we see in the Gospels. After Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came. He was a transformed man. What was, you know, where before he panicked, he was at peace. You know, Jesus, he said, my peace I leave unto you. Amen? And I believe that this is really, you know, that, you know, that a person who walks with God can be seen in confidence. Not, no, no, no. A person who is confident without God is an arrogant person. Okay? But how, because our confidence is not built upon our ability, our circumstances, our bank account, or whatever it may be, it's built upon our relationship with the one who is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, who is in charge of all things. And he said to me, don't worry. He said to me, don't fear. He said to me that I will meet all your needs according to your need, no, according to his riches. So the reason for we don't believe that is not that we don't you know it's found in our lack of walking with him. Okay? If you want to gain confidence in God, read your Bible, 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 read your Bible. Read your Bible. That books, Bible. I'm telling you, personal experience. I, you know, Mark 11, 22, I have to change my Bible because I have read so many Kenneth Hagen books, and you know what? There's nothing wrong with Kenneth Hagen. There's something wrong with me hearing Kenneth Hagen. Do you understand that? <clears throat> Every time I read Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24, I heard the voice of Kenneth Hagin. <laughs> so what happened was that the books taught me how to read the Bible. Not the Bible teaching me how to read Kenneth Hagin. Do you understand the difference? I thought it was very spiritual. So I had to change my Bible. It was terrible. You know, you know what? <laughs> You know, but you, because you can, you can believe you're so right, and when you, somewhere down the line, realize you're not. Yeah. But do you know what it's called? Growing up. Mm. Remember when we were 13? No, you don't remember. <laughs> 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 you're pretending. <laughs> you remember when you were 13? We knew everything. No one could teach us anything. We knew everything. Now when we look back, we're so embarrassed. We knew exactly how to dress. Have you seen pictures of yourself when you were 13? You had no idea. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> and, 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 and we, 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 you know, we have to, you know, and that's where it's true, it's needed more than ever to hear about the Holy Spirit. But it's important to understand what it means to walk with the Holy Spirit. If, you know, I have met this to someone, I, you know, you saw Dennis Falcon himself when he was here. If, if you didn't know anything, if you, you know, if you bumped into that man on the street, you would not say he was a charismatic, he was a spiritful man. He would, you would not classify him as that. But, but what, what, what I saw with him and with other people that I met is that there is a, what can I say, a, a quiet, silent confidence. Okay? That's what it means. That is the sign of being a spiritual person. Jesus, he never panicked. That's it. What are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? And you know, and you know, you have to understand, he was man like us. Yes. So he, you know, so so he was under the same limitation. You know, you imagine now, the the person in the natural that you love the most, you're not at that place. Someone, call, you get a phone call, and they tell you that person. Is dying. What would you do? Pastor, pray for me! Pray! 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 pray, pray. No, call anyone, email anyone, anyone, Facebook, please pray. <laughs> anyone we, we we know we will go in panic mode. Because we you know. But the thing is that what I realize is we have to look at you no. Know, and, and 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 I, you know, I'm just as you know. I'm not talking, you know, I'm not talking as someone who never done. I've done that many times, but the thing is, I realize is that that a lot of what I thought was spiritual was actually just flesh manifested in a religious way. Because I would have reacted exactly the same way if I hadn't met Jesus. Okay, before I'm okay, you know. Uh, you know, but I, I, you know, but but when I look at the life of Jesus, there is not one place where he panics. So when he hear about Lazarus, he doesn't panic. As I said, you know, Jesus didn't take his private donkey to to, to see Lazarus. Get the private donkey, where did Peter? The fast one. Put it in. Oh, you know, he didn't do that. And when he comes to, finally when he comes back, do you know what? They're actually blaming him. <laughs> if you had been here, he wouldn't have died. You know, but, but because he comes out in King James, it doesn't sound like someone blaming him. You know, but but it, it, they're actually saying, it's your fault, he's dead, because if you had been here, he wouldn't. Do you know, he doesn't justify himself. He don't panic when people accuse him of someone, something that he, that is not right. I could learn something from that. You're saying that about me? <laughs> I have a good heart. You should know. You should know all the things I do. I never would do that. He didn't panic. And when you listen to his prayer, you can read it. You know, he say, he, he say, he pray, and when he says, I didn't pray that for, for my sake. I pray that for their sake, the people yeah. around him, because he said, I know that you always hear me. Yeah. Come on, this is peace. Yes. Mm. He didn't walk around. 5,000 people show up for dinner, plus kids. So that, you know, that you can measure that with. That is equal to 15,000 because kids eat like there is no tomorrow. <laughs> at, least, at least adults, they have some kind of uh, shame barrier. <laughs> where you, do, you know, you know, but, you know, after fifth time, you can't go again. <laughs> Six. 
the, why it's not allowed in the buffet anymore. <laughs> Actually, I managed to be thrown out of a buffet <laughs> when I was a student. <laughs> okay, but, but he, you know, he didn't run around saying, Peter, John, John, where is your mom? Is your mom here? Is your mom? Mom? John, call your mom. <laughs> you want to sit on my head, and now is the time to make that decision count. <laughs> no, we need cooking, we need cooking, we need cooking. No, I seen you know, when we had Amish, uh, Ella's birthday, Amish. <laughs> Don't cross the line with Ami that day. <laughs> <laughs> Wilson, he stays away in the corner. <laughs> no, but, but, you know, but, but what I'm trying to say is that he didn't panic. Why did he not panic? He's, he was a spiritual man. Peace. Do you know what? I, if you read the greetings in the Gospels, no, sorry, in the Epistles, it's always about peace. Grace, peace. And you know, but the, the more I gained, the, the more intimate I become in my relationship with him, it's not expressed necessarily in an outward thing, but it's expressed it in an inward thing. Do you understand that? Peace. I know. Yeah, we, we, no, this report is not good, that report is not good, but I know. Why do I know? Because I know him. Amen? You know, that, and that's where, you know, when, when Jesus says to the disciples, it says when you go into a town, into a, into a house, let the peace that is in you come upon that house. Okay, the presence that you have, let that come upon that house. Why is it that you can see someone, you know, you can see some people, they can so confidently say, this is going to happen, you are healed, and they get healed. Okay, not just pretending they are healed, but they get actually healed. Why? Because someone told them. Just like someone tells you as a person, say, you know, I will be there, or I will do this for you. You don't, no, you, you call, you know, you have a problem in your house, you call the plumber, the plumber says, okay, I will be there for two o'clock. Okay? You stop calling all the other plumbers. Okay? Why? Because the one you called, he said, I will be there at two o'clock. Yeah. This is how, and, and, but when it comes to God, it's like we, 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 we've forgotten about these things. And it is really about, you know, the science, which well as it is that you are at peace. That you have, because, not peace in yourself or because you don't care or because you're not worried, uh, so, no, that you're in denial, but peace. Because you know what he has said. Amen? Because you know what he has said. And it, what he said counts because you know him. Do you understand that? And, 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 and that's, that, that is something that, you know, that I remember, I, I, you know, that I, I, I'm telling you, I, I never, I, I really thought that spirituality was something that I had to express. But when I realize more and more that it is something that is, is inside of me. Everything must be seen in the light of relationship. If it's not that, if it's not, if you lose that perspective, which is what the devil wants you to do, you get sidetracked. And even with truth, you will misunderstand and misapply. Yeah. And, and this is, you know, I know that, I know that, Oh, you didn't preach long of all that. It was long. And and uh, and but we, we, we have to uh, no but, but you know not to be fearful mm. but be to be alert. Yeah. Mm. Okay? Yeah. But but the devil only need to move you one millimeter. And make you, and all you have to do from that po point of once you move your one millimeter, just make sure you stay on that track. Do you know 
when, when we shoot a missile, or when we shoot a rocket into space, or when we want to shoot, when we want to go to the moon, you know, the calculations of the angles were so important. When the space shuttle had to go back into orbit, the calculation is so important because if we don't hit the atmosphere in the right angle, the space shuttle will bounce off and into space. So we, we have to hit it in the exact angle. What, we, we, you know, one centimeter for a missile that is shot can, can dictate the distance of 10,000 kilometers in its uh, landing place. And do you know what? The devil never comes to you or to me to say, I'm the devil, worship me. Okay? We're black. So look all look at all these horrible movies. Oh, go and become a drug addict right now. Oh, you know, what ten bangs while you at it does. <laughs> he, 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 he never do he, that's not how he comes, is it? No. No. What he, what he does is he moves you one millimeter with a with a truth from the Bible. But it's not applied to that situation, and because it's from the Bible, and because of you, you know, and you misapplying it, you you believe this is really the truth, and you, he keeps you on that track. You know, the first ten years you don't see any difference, because it's so still so close, because you gradually, you know, it starts like this, and over 10, 20, 15, 20 years, you know. But now you can't see the distance. Because now you believe the path that you're walking on is normal. So when you hear the truth, you're rejecting it. You know, that's where the danger is. And that's where, you know, that, you know, that uh, the second sign of a spiritual man, uh, one who walks with the Holy Spirit, is, I measure myself according to that, is how is my desire to read the Bible. Okay? And there has been many times where I said my I have not had a desire to read the Bible. But I because I but because I'm aware of that, that's a warning sign for me. And you know what? There's nothing wrong to have a warning sign because no, you can change it. But you know but but there's been you know but but there's something wrong with me. No, I'm talking about me, but I struggle to spend 15 minutes reading my Bible, or half an hour, or an hour, okay? But I have no problem reading a book. I have no problem sitting three, four, five hours in a conference. You know, I'm talking Christian things, okay? Mm -hmm. I have no problem watching DVDs or whatever it may be, but where they preach for hours upon hours. But when it comes to my individual personal Bible reading, 15 minutes is like mountain to climb. And you know what I have to say to myself? There's something really I need to adjust in my life. Because, you know what? Jesus, he was perfect. He was God as we heard today. And he was perfect man. And he read the Bible. If he had to read the Bible. Can you, you have the Bible, and you have to read the Bible. <laughs> Do you know how he did it? He looked in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know he did it. <laughs> but, but you understand? You know, but, you know, this is how I, I protect myself. Do you understand? But I'm not here to say, maybe, you know, but I'm just sharing with you how I, you know, because I, I have to, you know, just as what I say to you, that also applies to me. You know, the devil can move me one millimeter, and that's the same, as dangerous for me. And the way I learn to measure myself is not by how expressive I am or whatever the experiences that I have. No, I always learn to measure myself according to where is my desire for the will of God. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, there's a friend I have. He, he, you know, he, he was a former drug addict. Now he's a full-time preacher. He said, you know, you know, he he um, he said, you know, I'm going. I decide I'm going to read myself crazy in the Bible. No, you know, crazy, you know, 
just wait and wait and wait and wait. No, just the Bible. The Bible, 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 Bible. And he did that for a whole year, he said. You know, just Bible, Bible, you know. And he said the first year he did it, you know, he's you know, he's a pastor, food now, an itinerary preacher. He said, you know, my finances doubled. Well, oh, oh, let me say that again. <laughs> no, he said, my finances doubled. Uh, his opportunities for ministry doubled, uh, expanded opportunities and things that he desired and longed for. You know, simply because of that, he just changed. Because he, he comes out of the same tradition as I come out of, you know, get a hold of anything that you can hear, which are different. But, and, you know, but he said, you know, I went myself crazy in the Bible. It was like my brain blew up the first year. Okay? I read so much that I could, I was exhausted when I read the Bible. No. And he said, my life completely transformed. It wasn't because he studied a specific subject. Mm -hmm. It was because he, he gained, you know, now I'm going to find out what the Bible says about condemnation or relationships or whatever it might be. That's just how, no, he decided, I'm going to read the Word of God. I'm going to make that my part. And he said, my life just expanded beyond what I could have imagined. Why, why, why is it like? Because he fellowship with God. You know, the best way to learn a language, fellowship with most people speaks it. Except for if you want to speak, learn to speak English, don't go to Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> you might learn a different English, man. <laughs> okay, but but it, it is uh, it is it is something that we have to you know that we hear statements, and I have probably said them myself, but where we have to be careful where it. It, it very subtle me, very subtle. <laughs> the Bible get a lesson and this value. You no, know, not not in the terms of you no. Know, it's not like the devil come and say the Bible is not worth reading you know, because we we know we know. Hopefully, we, you know, <laughs> if, if you heard that, that's not God. Okay. <laughs> no. No, but we, 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 I mean, it's statements that is in the body of Christ now that like statements that is, that is said, and uh, that like, you know, that the Bible does not contain the whole thing of God. Okay? And, 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 and yes, there's a scripture where John says that if all the miracles that Jesus did, all the libraries in the world would not contain it. And that's true. But the thing is that when you start hearing statements like that, we start operating in an area where we come into a gray source. Okay? Now God decided that our relationship with Him was within the boundaries of the Word of God. But when you hear a statement where it says, you know, there is more to God than there is in the Bible, yes, that's true. But God decided, the same God decided that my relationship with Him will be within the boundaries of the Bible. Okay? So what happens is that, what, and I, 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 I'm telling you, this is a preacher confessing here, okay? That what happens is that. Because we, 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 we buy into the idea there is more to God than there is in the Bible. And when it applies to my individual walk to Him, what happens is that we, we don't say, because we so be very clever. So now, revelation knowledge gain a higher authority than the Word of God. Because there's more to God than yes. the Bible. Mm. Yeah. You know what? I never understood why people could look me straight in my eyes and say, God had told me to do that one thing, and it was absolutely stupid. Mm -hmm. But now I started understanding. 
because what revelation, so when you go down that line of revelation, knowledge in that interpretation, is that your experience has higher authority than the Word of God. Yes. Because we say, I, I saw it myself. I experienced it. But you know what? I have had some of the nicest words to telling me. And it was not God. Some of the, 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 the most beautiful voice spoke to me. And it was the devil. You heard it too. <laughs> you won't harm anyone. It's good for you. You, you deserve it. You worked hard. You did one and a half push ups in your mind. <laughs> we all, you know, but, and it becomes so real to us. And what happens is that it becomes dangerous. You know what? Is Today is where a lot of the but God says this, and God said that, and God showed me this, and God did this to me, and God showed this to me. But you know about Jesus, he said, it is written. Yeah. It is written. 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 Do you know, by a biblical revelation knowledge, you know, you cannot have revelation knowledge without having knowledge of the Bible. Your knowledge of the Bible dictates how much revelation knowledge you can have. Because the revelation knowledge you will have will be within the parameters of the Word of God. Yeah. Okay, I want to challenge you now. You go home, search the Bible, and find... Uh, how much does the Bible actually talk about heaven? How much does the Bible actually talk about heaven? Because following Jesus are not about those two things. Following Jesus is about being a disciple. Following him. To, follow, to be a Christian is not about going to heaven. Being a Christian is to become like Jesus. Yeah. In becoming like Jesus... Heaven is included. Okay? You know, it's included. You know, but you can go to a holiday place, a very nice holiday place, Honolulu, I mean to say, fully included. You know, I don't know about you, oh, maybe now this is one people I'm talking to. I don't think about the menu, I'm thinking about the beaches. <laughs> I, I was just looking, no, 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 this is for people. No, no, they only look at the menu. <laughs> no, but, and, and Danes too, you know, Danes can go to a party, then we go home, next day they call one another and say, what do you, do you know what we talk about? What did you eat? <laughs> <laughs> and the, the party is measured according to how good the food was. Was the food nice? <laughs> Who cooked the food? Oh, no. But, but our message is not heaven and hell. Our message is follow Jesus. Yeah. And heaven just comes with a package. Why? Yeah. Right? Because I said disciples, they follow Jesus. Yeah. Jesus is in heaven. So I end up in heaven too. But my motivation is not to go to heaven. My motivation is to follow Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand that? And it has to be, and, and you know, and we have to live by the word of God. No, but and many of us, we you know, if you're honest with yourself, because I had to be honest with myself, I didn't want to read the word of God. I want to read books because it's written in a language that I can better digest. I can relate to in a better way. But it does not make me grow, I realize. Because what I happened to me, like as I said, I, instead of saying, uh, instead of being more like Jesus, I start thinking more like Kenneth Hagin. <laughs> you know, and Kenneth Hagin, he's a wonderful man. <coughs> he, God blessed him and so on. But God only need one. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you have one favorite preacher. The Lord says you're never going to make it if you want to become like someone else. 
Okay. I don't know. I, I I'm not a monarch. Uh, I'm not. You know. If, if I could choose, I'm a Republican. Okay. And so I didn't watch this wedding thing. <laughs> anyway, that's not that's not that, that stuff experience. Was just me. Okay. But I was informed because I didn't watch it. But the Anglican priest who married them, he said that he made because you know, he made a statement. I was told because this guy who told me he nearly fell off his chair. He's from Denmark. Because he also thought, you know, this is just some some religious lingo we're going to go through, and then they, you know, speak a little bit King James, and then they are married. And then, but he said to me, I don't know if it's true, because but I trust him. Why should he, you know? But he said to me that this guy, the, the priest, the Archbishop of Canterbury, he said something like, something like, be be your true self, and you will set the world on fire. I said, when, I had, when he told me that, when this priest said that, I said, are you sure that's an Anglican? <laughs> okay, but really what it is about it, for too long, we've been so busy trying to figure out what the world needs. And what we do is we try to become like the world, does not need a church that looks like it. What the world needs is a church that looks like Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Amen? And, 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 and we know, be your true self and you will set the world on fire. Okay? And you know, that, that's where the anointing is. That's where Jesus is. You know, but I think many people, they, 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 they want a relationship with Jesus, but they never seem to quite get there, because they're trying to be something that they are not, because we are so influenced by people, out there. and because we are so influenced by voices, we don't dare be who we truly are, and you know what? It's only when we can dare be who we truly are mm -hmm. that we can truly meet Him. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you if you see how what happened when Jesus interacted with people, the woman at the well, you know, He go He He, he speaks to her. She acknowledges who she truly are, mm -hmm. and He reveals Himself. Mm -hmm. You know what? God does not want you to pretend to be something that you are not. He wants you to be with him as who you truly are. Strong relationship, real relationships are built upon where both parties are who they are. That's why you don't have a relationship with your boss. Because you're all pretending. <laughs> this is the best boring place I ever happen. I've never been happy about work. He didn't see two hours only for her work again. <laughs> okay? No, that's why you don't have relationships. Okay? But, and, and, and many of us losing out with the riches of God because we have in our head that we have to be like that one or we read that book and line it out like that or line it out like this and line it out like No, throw it out. You be you. Because if, we, if we're going to go by all these books, we're all going to be American. No. You, you, you be you. Okay? You know, you have to, you know, you, you and I, we need to start believing that God loves you as you are. We need to start believing that. Yeah. Okay? Not just saying it, understand it, quote it, proclaim it, agree with it. No, we need to believe it. He actually loves you who as who you are. But we don't really believe that, so we try to become something else. We try to be a better of us, but that's not the one he loves. He loves you as you are. Do you know what? It was only when Peter denied 
You know, when he realized, when he, when he cursed Jesus three times, and when Peter truly realized that Jesus loved him. Mm. When Peter was truly, you know, when, he, when Peter knew that Jesus knew who he truly was, that was when Peter realized, he loves me. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that you should stay as you are, but that's a good point. Because if you do, he won't love you. No, that's true. But, you know, he, you know we, we need to love to because that's where relationship is built. You, know, you cannot build a relationship if you have to pretend all the time. That's why there's no relationships in church anymore. Because we're all pretending. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm so spiritual. Then we get into our car. Get out of my face! <laughs> Don't you know? That's with your vibes, not me. <laughs> Praise God, I don't have a fish in my gut. <laughs> no, but do you understand? You know, but this is where I realize, this is where I learn to but my relationship is built upon that he that I know that he knows me. So that I don't need to pretend. Do you know what we call people who pretend? We call them prostitutes. We become something else to gain something. Okay? We might not sell our body, but we sell our soul. Do you know what? I, said, I think, I don't know if I said last Sunday or five, it doesn't really matter, I can say it again, because you hear 20,000 times over and over again. That, that is why that, the, the depressed, you know, that so many pastors all over the Western world get burned out. You know, it's, it's embarrassing. You know, I, I really find it embarrassing. It would be similar to an accountant who goes bankrupt. It doesn't work out with me. No, but think about it. a pastor works for the living God who he every Sunday spends time on saying he's so good. <laughs> and then he's burned out, depressed. Okay? There's something wrong somewhere. And do you know why it happens? It's because of when we try to pre we're pretending to be something that we are not. And we sell our soul. And when you do have done that consistently over a tough period, you end up believing that that's the person God loves and not you. And when you start believing that, you start becoming that person all the time. Okay? That's why, like, it's a big step from being dating and then to a proper relationship. And from a relationship, a courtship, to be married. Because now you see your wife without makeup. <laughs> That's why we say in church, though you cannot sleep together before you're married. <laughs> it's too late to get out of it now, you're stuck. Why in the olden days they banned makeup in churches? <laughs> so you knew what you entered into before you got married. <laughs> no, I don't know about this is just a stupid thought, okay? But do you understand that? But that, that you know that back to our thing with God. Mm. We have to we know it that's where you know when you have a relationship, you have the energy. Mm. you have the relationship, you have the anointing. Do you understand that? When I'm with Jens Ma, I'm the boss of Mauritius. I tell you, you can do anything. You know, Jens Ma's nickname in Mauritius, Mrs. Trousers. Mrs. Trousers. Because she was she was on the port when all the ships, the container ships came in from China, she had to take what they imported from China. She was the only woman there, I'm telling you. But 
when I was in Mauritius, I was the boss. I never felt like that before. <laughs> My brother-in-law, he crashed the car into a bus. When Mrs. Travels came to the police station, you could go home. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know Yen passed the driving test a year too early? She was not qualified to drive, she was too young. But Yen's mom, Mrs. Travels, she said, don't worry, I'll sit at the back of the car. She passed. <laughs> and so, to be quite honest, I still don't know how. <laughs> okay. When I'm, so, so when I'm in Mauritius, because of my relationship, I'm the king. Okay. So much so, that when I got a haircut in Mauritius, I really thought I got a good deal. I paid 50p. I came home. Well, I've only paid 50p for my haircut. I got told off. You shouldn't have paid anything. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, if we ever go again, I'm going to print t shirts with a picture. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, that's, you know, I, you know, Anointing in application is the confidence in that nothing can overcome you. Yeah. And whatever is coming your way, you can handle and overcome. Yeah. That's the anointing. Yeah. And the anointing, as I said, is the Greek word, uh, sorry, the English word for the Greek word when we say, we say Christ. Yeah. So when you have Jesus, you have the anointing. You know, when you have the relationship, when you have the relationship, you have the anointing. But because the devil managed to make us believe that there's something, you have Jesus, and then you can have the anointing, he separates it. Mm. We, we start believing it, we build doctrines around it, yeah. and because now we start believing it, yeah. what you believe will happen. <laughs> but it's a whole belief. I have all things in Christ. That's why we quote scriptures like, I can do all things for Christ. Yes, what? What is Christ? I can do all things for Christ. They mean refer to Jesus in my heart, but what we really say, I can do all things through the anointing within me. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? That? You know, but it based down on that relationship. That's why Moses says, take that mind. Take not your presence away from me. Mm -hmm. If your presence go, I'm not going. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay? Mm -hmm. Take not your presence. Now he didn't say take not your gift. Take not that. You know, that's why we in first in Peter we call it a wild priesthood. Mm -hmm. Okay, why? Because he refers to the Levites in the Old Testament. Their inheritance was God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not a piece of land. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not, not, not your, you know, some people without God, you know, people without God, when your colleagues, their blessing is their job. Mm -hmm. yeah. When they move away from that job, they're not blessed. Okay? Our blessing is Him. Wherever we move, we are blessed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Do you understand? Yeah. No, but, 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 but that's where the Levites are far better off than all the other tribes. Yeah. They could move anywhere they wanted to move, and they were blessed. Why? Because my inheritance was not a piece of land, was not a specific job, was not a specific thing. It was Him. It so all we had to do, worship, really talks about not. It talks about relationship. You know what? Every relationship that is worth a soul, to use the biblical terms, you have to take up your cross daily. Because if you enter, if you, you're not just in a marriage. If you start in a marriage, you know, it might have gone well for many years, but if you one morning waking up and say, you know, now it's about me, you're already on a track for that marriage to dissolve. If marriage needs to be strong, you every day you wake up, it's no longer I will live. Yeah. Because strong relationships are built upon I sacrifice my life. Yeah. If 
should stop doing that. That was even more aggressive. Amen. It, 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 this is, and this is where the devil is trying to rob us off. He sells us a relationship without a price. Okay? He trying to, he trying to make us go another way around it. But there's only one way. Lay down your life. Come to the cross. Die. Be crucified with Christ. And then you can be resurrected with him. But it's only that one way. No. And, and, and it's so, 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 so important. In this day and age, to stay close to him. To stay close to him. More than ever. There's so many voices around us. There's so many things happening in the world. And 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 whatever it is, you know, stay close. It, you know, stay close because for all we know, our world as we know it could have gone bankrupt next year. Mm -hmm. We're not that far off. No, just wait. Greece go bankrupt. Portugal, Spain, Italy. <laughs> and it's all interconnected. Yeah. Do you know what? It's more than ever now. I need to hear his voice. I need to hear his voice. I don't need to fear. I don't need to fear. I don't need to be afraid. I need to worry. Why? Because he was in me. He's greater than he was in the world. I can do all things for Christ who strengthens me. Okay? I can do all things. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. Jesus was never worried. He was at peace. Okay? Amen? Right? Yeah. Amen. Not happy about that. But you, God, show them the pastor is right and they all walk. No. <laughs> but you understand? No, it, it is, it's a time for the bride to go into maturity. Mm -hmm. He's not coming for a little girl. Mm -hmm. Okay? He's coming for a bride. Yeah. Amen? That's good. For a bride. No, I don't, I, I did, you know, I'm glad that every time. There was a situation in our marriage, yet didn't want to go. I want to go to my daddy. <laughs> so I didn't marry a little girl, you know. Uh, Jesus is not coming for a little girl, he's coming for a bride. Girls are not allowed to get married. Mm. Amen? Yeah. Maybe in other religions, but not here. <laughs> okay. we, we, we require a level of maturity. So, 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 take this to heart. Yeah. Take, the, take the limits off what you can expect of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Be true to yourself. Live a balanced life.